Good evening. Welcome to the Friday Night Press Box Southeast Tennessee podcast presented by Team FYN Sports. Joined as always tonight by Coach Mark Stone and Jeff Kate. You can see Jeff Kate's Twitter handle right there beside his name. He's he's a special guy. Um, a lot going on in Southeast Tennessee this week. A lot of COVID cancellations. We have um, games obviously being canceled by COVID. It's not a good thing. Um, but let's recap a little bit of, of last week for one team in particular. We're about to be joined by uh, this team. Loudon wins 31-6 to over Saudi Daisy, a team that um, Jeff Cade is very familiar with in Saudi Daisy. Um, a big win for Loudon there, Jeff Cade. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, they were uh, able to get off to a good start. And, and you know, with the new regions in play this year, it's, uh, you know, a lot of uh, moving pieces with region rivals going in and out. But, uh, uh, yeah, bit, definitely a big win for uh, the Loudoun football team there. I believe it was the first time that those two, te- those two teams have met on the gridiron. So uh, definitely uh, a good way. It's obviously a good way to get started the season with a victory, but especially the way that they did that against Saudi Daisy for sure. Absolutely. Coach Stone, you were a part of this rivalry game. It's been a long time, but you're still a part of it. Coaching at Lenore City there for, for a year, I believe you were there. Loudon and Lenore City, the Battle of the Bridge. How big is that game? <laughs> uh, when I was there, we were playing at uh, at Loudon, and it's been many moons ago, but uh, I was doing my student teaching, and I was helping, helping coach down there, and we had people that were – that we're going, you know, coming to practice, you know, if we win Friday night, we're going to walk back across the bridge to, to Lenore city high school, you know, stuff like that. And, uh, it was a great rivalry at that time. We wasn't, uh, we wasn't competitive with, uh, with Loudon. Uh, I don't know. I really hadn't kept up with that rivalry. I know Loudon's had some great teams through those years and stuff, but, uh, it was, uh, it was great. Uh, I loved it. We ran the wishbone. They ran the wing tee, and you know it was um, it was about eighty plays of of running football, smash mouth, and uh, and everything. But uh, it was a great rivalry, and uh, I'm I'm sure it is today. And, and that is great, and um, I'm sure that was that was a fun game to be a part of. And now we're going to be joined by the head coach of Loudon High School, head coach Jeff Harry. Um, Coach Harry, before we ever, before we really get into, uh, you know, last week or anything, I want to point out something that's that's big for this Loudon program, a brand new turf facility there at Loudon High School. Let me tell you, that is that is a beautiful site there, and and it's a good thing to have up there, isn't it? It was, you know, to to have your city who does not financially support the school system uh, step up and and convert our field to turf uh, so that our youth programs can play out there was really an added benefit to the county school. And so it was a unique, uh, unique relationship and definitely a, a big boost for our program. That's great. Um, Coach Harry, you go to, you go to Saudi Daisy last week and you went 31 to six. Um, Talk a little bit about last week, the high points, the low points, and and just, just how the team played overall. Well, you know, it's a typical first game. We, we had our moments. uh, We jumped out, I guess, First three drives, we were able to drive down and score. Uh, One was a 13-play drive. The other was an 11-play drive. Uh, Got control of the game. Kind of sputtered a little bit as Saudi Daisy adjusted uh, defensively. Uh, But the one thing that was consistently throughout the night, we made Saudi Daisy one-dimensional. They had 19 carries for 18 yards. And so uh, we ran 75 offensive plays to their 49. And and so we were able to possess the ball. stay away from the big bad turnover as far as converting it into points. They hit us with one big long touchdown pass uh, late in the first half, uh, but I felt pretty comfortable throughout the night. And, uh, you know, we were able to kind of have control of that game throughout. Jeff, you have uh, uh, any questions for, well, Jeff, Kate or Jeff Harry? <laughs> well, you know, just, you know, being in this area, Coach, you know, w- w- we see Saudi Daisy quite a bit, and you mentioned something about keeping them one-dimensional and, you know, if teams are able to do that, they're able to find success against Saudi Daisy because they like they like to you know throw the ball down the field and you know if they can get that passing game going. It's definitely a uh, it's going to be a shootout for the other team on the other sideline. But it seemed like like you said, your team was able to keep them you know ground focused and uh, 
you know, obviously that defense definitely pitched a second half shutout. So that was definitely a big thing for you and your team. Yeah, I thought athletically we matched up well in the secondary. Uh, you know, they, they had some yards uh, throwing the football, as you said. I know Coach Barnes likes to do that. Uh, but we ne they never hit us with big plays. And so they did hit one. Uh, we, our starting corner went out with a broken ankle. Uh, the backup came in on his first play. They tested him deep, and uh, they were able to get behind us uh, and convert there late in the half. But other than that, you know, we had control of the game up front, and I thought that was the key, even though athletically, uh, you know, football has changed in my mind. You know, yards really don't matter anymore. It's about getting into the end zone. Uh, late in the game with our second unit out there, we were able to get two stops in the red zone just because they couldn't run the ball. They, they tried to throw it into the end zone, and we were able to shrink the field on them a little bit uh, and keep them out of the end zone and, and, and go home with a 31-6 to victory. Coach Stone, uh, you were, you were, like we said earlier, you were a part of this rivalry. Um, now, granted, you were on the, on the wrong side of, as this guy, but if you have any questions for Coach Eric's uh, – Go ahead. I, I tell you what, we we went uh, we went to war, and I know you guys want to want to hear all my war stories back from nineteen seventy four. You know, uh, the Chargers were nine and two that year, and our two losses were to uh, to Loudon County, uh, and uh, and Loudon won the state that year. Um, one of the biggest whippings I ever took. I, I keep telling this story. They they had a they had a little old guard. We played a four three defense. They had a little old guard about one hundred and forty three pounds, and the other guy was a, uh, on the other side was about one hundred and forty. And uh, boy, they they just wore us out. But uh, they had a great. It's it's a great tradition, you know. Um, I uh, uh, I enjoyed it as a player. I enjoyed it as a as a coach and uh, coaching up there and uh, or coaching against Loudon and uh, I, I think you've always got to respect your program, Coach Eric. You're doing a uh, you're doing a great job. I watched y'all at McMinn Central last year, and uh, I think uh, I think you know this team's no different. I don't know what to ask him. How, are you a big team? I know you're a spread team, right, Coach? Is he froze up? He might be froze up. I believe he is. I, they are. They are a spread team. Um, they spread the ball out. Um, for the for the people listening that do not know, Coach Herrick's son Keaton Herrick is the starting quarterback for Loudon. Um, they've got a good a good um, tailback there beside him. A big offensive line. Uh, really in the trenches, they're big. Offensive line, defensive line. They will spread you out. They've got wide receivers, uh, some big guys out there. <clears throat> I mean, they're they're traditionally, you know, a, a football school, and we talked about that a little bit last week, Coach Stone. Loudon is a football school. Well, it's always, you know, it's it's like he, it's like Coach Eric said, you know. Of course, I didn't know how they got the 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 field, but the city of Loudon, who, you know, it's Loudon County's uh, high school. They step up and put, you know, put turf on the field, and uh, I'm a I'm a great proponent of uh, of the turf fields now. Uh, I have I have coaches around. I, I wouldn't have it for the world, but I coached at Fanning County for ten years uh, with it. You go out there and practice. It's pouring down rain, you know, and uh, your kids are not burned up with it. But my hats off to uh, to the the city of Loudon for doing that for them. Absolutely. It looks like we have Coach Herrick back. <clears throat> A little technical difficulties, but hey, that, that's that, life. Guys. It happens. Yeah, sorry about that. So, no, Coach, you are you fine. Exactly right. It was an amazing thing, you know. Uh, it, it was amazing. The first rain we had, it poured down rain uh, probably 3 o'clock. And most days that would have either put us in the gym or we'd have been practicing a mud pit. Uh, we were able to go out there and hit the turf field and didn't skip a beat. The very next day, day here, it poured down rain in the entire practice, but we had no lightning, but we were able to keep practicing. And so uh, it's definitely been, been a benefit to us, and it's allowed all of our sports to experience. Looks like we've lost Jeff Herrig again, but that's okay. Um, like he was saying, 
I guarantee their practice rate, you going from the gym to the field, has been phenomenal. I, I guarantee that that you know, well, it, it's been a blessing. I guess they're in Canning County in ten years. We probably practiced in the gym about two or three times, and loud. Uh, I mean, loud lightning caused that, and uh, you know, it's it's. I, I I just I can't believe everybody's not pushing toward that, but. Uh, you know, Coach Harry, tell me about your big guys up front. Uh, guys, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. I'm here in the, in the country of Loudman. I don't know if my internet's acting up or what, but I sure apologize. <laughs> well, let me let me interject here. These two <laughs> these two gentlemen you're talking to here, Coach, can say the same thing for another Jeff, the one I, that's speaking right now last week. I was out in, a, you know, in another part of Chattanooga on, you know, had full bars on my cell phone trying to do, you know, log into this podcast. I had the same issues. I totally get it. So uh, don't, don't feel bad at all. Yeah. Coach, uh, I'm, I'm really a proponent of, uh, of the spread offense. And uh, Wesley tells me you got some big old guys up front. How about telling us about them a little bit? Well, we've really been in a year of transition. I, I lost three three-year starters last year up front, and so we replaced them with three <laughs> sophomores. Uh, one thing I with uh, at Loudon is our offensive line is that's all they do, and so uh, we have uh, five offensive linemen and. and It's okay. Uh, we're we'll, we'll, we're gonna battle through this, Coach Stone and Co and Jeff Kate. We're we're gonna battle through this. Um, <clears throat> like he said, five O linemen and then four D linemen. <clears throat> they don't play both sides of the ball. Um, Coach Stone, do you remember a high school team that can do that? It's I mean, it it rarely happens, but to to have five starting offensive linemen, four defensive linemen that don't play both way, that is that's something. Well, let me. I, I, I'm not. I'm not punching the the philosophy of it. And, and Jeff and Loudon's a great football coach and great team. Um, I was at I was at football camp at the University of Tennessee one year, and uh, Coach Barry was the offensive line coach. He coached Anthony Munoz at, at USC, and then he coached his son. Uh, at Tennessee, and we we were sitting in there at lunch one day. I was I was one of the camp uh, guys, coach coaches, but uh, I was a whistleblower. But anyway, uh, he said he didn't like to recruit kids who only played on the offensive line, and uh, you know I kind of adapted to that a little bit. And of course, you know, most of my teams, they had to play both ways. I have had some teams that, that I didn't have to do that, but, uh, you know, he, 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 he told me, he said, the only reason Michael Munoz is at the university of Tennessee is because I knew his daddy was a great, a great, uh, football player. You know, you go back to, you go back to Loudon, um, Wilkerson, uh, played played about the time I played a little bit after. Played at the University of Tennessee. He was all over the field, and uh, but you know that's that's great if you can if you can get five and four and and, and you know when when the other teams got the football, you're over there and, you, and you're you're working with those guys because they have to be so much in sync. As as offensive linemen, you you got to know, and you're you're sitting over there with with three guys. Well, they don't know what this tackle out here is seeing, you know. So I, I think that's I think that's a a great uh, thing, um, but uh, you know, uh, if you got them, I'd do it. And uh, a few years ago, with uh, with Coach Pavo, we tried to we we tried to two platoon, offense and defense. And, you know, it worked until we got some kids nicked up a little bit and we had to play them. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, really, this I'm looking forward to. You know, you don't we don't hear much about Loudon. Obviously, we used to because they were in the red in the region with Red Bank and a couple other teams around here last couple of years. And you know, just uh, you know, looking at the overall history between Loudon and Lenore City, it's fairly close. I mean, it's like just barely over fifty percent winning percentage for Loudon, and you know, they've won three of the last four when with Coach Herrick still you know coming back for a second stint. So. Uh, should be a great atmosphere. You know, like you said, the turf field's a big thing. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the community will show up no matter what, but they'll definitely show up for this game for sure. So it should be a great atmosphere there on Friday night. Those those two communities will, will be there in force, I'm telling you. And, uh, you know, certainly uh, I have the utmost respect for uh, Loudon, for Coach Harry. I, I've followed them for years uh, in my coaching and in the – First and second term that he's been there, and I think uh, I think they're going to be a, a very uh, hot prospect uh, come playoff time. And a few years ago, um, WBIR put that game on TV. It was the Battle of the Bridge. They did a full you know full TV production on it. Man, that that was that was that was great for the communities both Loudon and the North City. Um, it was, and I mean it's it's just a good. Just a good, a good rivalry football game. You look at rivalry games like McMinn County, McMinn Central. One we're going to highlight here in just a minute: Walker Valley, Bradley Central, Walker Valley, Bradley. You know, all of them. I like that. And um, Cleveland, Bradley. I, I mean, just good rivalry games. And this is definitely one of those great rivalry games in the state of Tennessee. I like these games, these rivalry games where you can play them, and then everybody goes their separate ways. You know what I'm saying? You play them, um, you know, nothing Nothing was harmed last week other than a loss for McMinn Central. Uh, you know, the same same thing for McMinn. They, you know, now they got to focus on on district and region and all that stuff. And I, I, I think that's wonderful. I, I really do. I mean, yeah, technically, in theory, they don't – you could lose every non-district game and it doesn't matter. I mean, it – Rivalry games, all they, all it is, is bragging rights for another year. That's all it is. Absolutely, most of the time, you know, most of the time, unless they're in their in your district. Um, we but, lost, we lost to McMinn County one year. Uh, played about as bad as any football team game that I've ever coached, and uh, we lost bad. We came back on Labor Day morning, went to work, kids was ready. We won nine games in a row there at McMinn Central. And, you know, it just went to, you know, it went to show you, you got to put that, put that behind you and let's go. Absolutely. And, um, you know, unfortunately, Coach Harry, you know, not, not, not able to, to stay on the podcast along with, with the technical difficulties, but we will definitely have him on in the future. Um, and we appreciate him doing his best to, to, you know, to come back on, um, so Loudon and Lenore City, a big time game this weekend. Loudon coming off of a thirty-one to six win over Sadie Daisy. I'm not sure what Lenore City did last week. I should have looked that up. But Loudon, I would take Loudon probably pretty big in this game just because of what Loudon got. Um, would you guys Loudon the North City? Who you got, Coach Tom? Loudon. Jeff. Likewise, Loudon. Loudon, Loudon all the way around. I think I don't think it's going to be too close. I mean, it'll be close for a little while. And um, I think Loudon runs away with it, but that was that was Loudon and Lenore City. Um, we're we're going to take a quick commercial break. Be sure to before we go to commercial break, be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, guys. Share this all over and um, help. Let's let's grow the community of high school football and and uh, really get these kids' names out there and schools' names out there. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back on the Friday Night Press Box presented by Team Lions Sports. Welcome back to the Friday Night Press Box, Southeast Tennessee podcast presented by Team FYN Sports. Guys, another big game, Walker Valley and Bradley Central. Jeff, you guys on 102.3 are covering this game, correct? We are. It's going to be our uh, our uh, Coca-Cola Red Zone game of the week this week and uh, looking forward to being back at uh, 
at Walker Valley once again. We did the playoff game last year when they hosted Powell, and that was a great atmosphere. Wound up being uh, Walker Valley's fr- first home playoff win in school history against a really good Powell team. So uh, uh, Coach Aikens and the Mustangs are looking to carry the momentum uh, from that game and the the big win last week against Notre Dame into this game against Bradley Central on Friday night. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, something you alluded to there. Walker Valley, a 37 nothing winner over Notre Dame last week. Um, Jeff, we were sitting in the skyboxes at UTC Finley Stadium, and I told you, I said, Walker Valley has caught my eye tonight. Walker Valley, they're going to be fun to watch. They they do a good job offensively and defensively. They pitched a shutout against Notre Dame. Now, granted, Notre Dame's not what Notre Dame used to be. Um, Notre Dame, they're down in numbers a little bit, and um, – you know, they just don't have the depth needed there. Um, but Walker Valley, a 37 nothing winner over Notre Dame. Um, and right now, we are pleased to be joined by head coach of the Walker Valley Mustangs, Coach Drew Akins. Drew, it's good to have you. Hey, guys. Hey guys. Thanks for having me, man. All right. A big-time 37 nothing win over Notre Dame last week. Can you, can you kind of recap last week for us? Uh, yeah, man, our defense played uh, outstanding. You know, anytime you can hold anybody, doesn't matter who it is, to a shutout, uh, it's a big deal. So proud of our defense. Uh, the main thing I saw was just flying to the football. You know, we had a defense lineman, uh, Miles Mann, that just played an outstanding game. He had seven and a half tackles, five for loss, a uh, sack and a half, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, a touchdown, just – uh, absolutely couldn't be blocked all night, but but really defense as a whole. And then you know, anytime you win the turnover battle, five to nothing, uh, you're gonna have a chance. You have a really good chance to win a ball game. So, uh, really proud of what we did on defense and special teams. You know, we had a special teams turnover as well. Uh, offensively, uh, we threw the ball really well. I thought Ryan Lay played a great game for his first game at quarterback. Uh, it was something that you know I was really proud of how he was able to to have composure and come in and a, and a really big crowd and a big game with it being the first game on our new turf uh, and to control his emotions and, and be able to throw for two touchdowns and run for two as well. Uh, it was a good night for him. I thought we need to run the ball a little bit better. If I have negatives, uh, it's definitely up front where uh, we just kind of miss some assignments. Uh, we got to get that cured up. You got to be able to run the football if you want to have success. Uh, so we've got to run the football a little bit better. We were just talking to uh, Loudon's head coach, Jeff Herrick, and uh, Loudon also got new turf. He was talking about, you know, really practices, you know, they haven't been in the gym as much. Just how big is that new turf? Obviously, it keeps playing conditions, you know, a, a constant the whole time. Uh, how big is that new turf? Man, I, I, I don't know if I can put into words how big it is. Uh, you know, last Tuesday – uh, the, that hurricane or tropical storm came through, uh, and my socks were dry until about halfway through practice. So, you know, to be able to, to any coach, any coach knows how big a deal that is to have dry socks an hour into practice, uh, on a rainy day. So, uh, it, it really changes the, you know, a lot of things It changes logistics. You know, you're able to walk straight out the front door. Uh, and be able to be on a practice field uh, that is your game field. And it has lines painted, and it, you don't have to mow it. And, and just uh, it's been a blessing for sure. And I'm proud of our county for making that decision. You know, they didn't have to make that decision. They could have uh, upgraded facilities other places, but they understood uh, the investment into not only the football program, um, but but our school as a whole. You know, I've, I've walked up here every day since, and I've seen PE classes up here. and a kickball tournament up here and just every kid has kind of benefited from this already. So uh, definitely shows that our county is serious uh, about football. It's serious about its athletics. It's serious about its facilities. Uh, and they, they've put the, uh, they've put their stamp on that. And that's for sure. That's great. Not only for, for, from a football side, but like you said, PE, all the other things that can be used uh, on that turf field. Um, now looking to, to Friday night, a big game, a really big game. You got you got Bradley Central, and um, talk a little bit about this week. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I've always seen a lot of similarities to me and Damon. Uh, Damon took over uh, Bradley Central when they were one in nineteen. I took over Walker Valley uh, when we were one in nineteen. Uh, he's kind of built Bradley Central into a, a power, especially in our area. 
Uh, and it's something that we're trying to do here is trying to build a program uh, to somebody or to, to a place where the expectation is to win. And when you look down there, the expectation is to win. Uh, so, you know, we have, we have big goals that we want to be the premier program in this area. And if you want to be the premier program, uh, then you have to beat the premier program and, and they are that. So, uh, just looking at the, the field, uh, what you'll see on Friday night, you know, their quarterback is, is kind of what everything hinges on. Ed McClary, uh, kind of came in last year when Javen got hurt. Uh, he, he really had a successful year. Uh, he's a great athlete, but but more than anything, he has that quarterback it factor uh, that just – he's just a gamer, man. He just makes plays when plays aren't there. Uh, he scrambles really well. He runs the ball really well. So uh, he, everything kind of hinges off him. Their offensive line is veteran. Uh, it's something that, that definitely they rely on. They're running power counter, running right at you. Uh, and if you don't stop it, they're going to continue to run right at you. And then what I've been most impressed by just watching them on film is their front seven on defense. You know, I think their front seven uh, lost a lot of guys last year, and I think there was an expectation that they were going to be down. Uh, but I can tell you from watching film, dude, they they have not uh, – they're not rebuilding. They, they've reloaded up front, and they're really good up front. And we're going to have to uh, really bring it and make sure our assignments are right if we want to be able to run the football and protect against them. Because the biggest thing Damon does, in my opinion, uh, is he makes that defense play aggressive. And they fly around to the football. Uh, and they they obviously preach a message of being violent when you get to the football. So we're going to have to make sure that we handle it up front. And if we don't handle it up front, they have so many athletes in the back end uh, that we can't put the ball in, in, in harm's way uh, because those guys can catch it. And they had two pick sixes last week uh, that really changed the game for them. Yeah, uh, my my co-host here, Jeff Kate and Coach Mark Stone. Coach Coach Stone, um, have any questions for Coach Akins? Well, uh, I went head to head with his dad many years there at Copper Basin, mm -hmm. and uh, Drew. If he's if he's half the football coach as he was as a as a player, uh, he he's a tremendous coach, and uh, you know I congratulate them for really turning that thing around. Um, I. Uh, my first head coaching job, I took over a program that was two and twenty-eight, and you know it's it's a it's a hard climb, but when you get there, uh, it's it's very rewarding. But uh, tell us a little bit uh, about your your defense, uh, coach, and, and uh, uh, maybe you're up front, your front seven or whatever uh, that you're that you're doing. Yeah, I, I, I tell you what, the biggest change here, you know, if you look at the history at Walker Valley, they've always scored points. You know, they have Bryce Nunley and Cooper Melton and uh, Colton Gibson and Alex King, and they always were able to put uh, points on the scoreboard. But the problem here was always the defense. The defense always had a problem leveraging people, always had a tr trouble getting people on the ground, always had trouble keeping other teams off the scoreboard. I know the year – they went one and nine. They scored like 40 points a game and just, you know, they were losing losing games 42 to, to 60 or just, you know, uh, it, it was the number one thing I knew that when we got here, we had to build a defense uh, that matched the offense. And, and man, bringing in uh, a few coaches on defense has just changed the entire mentality uh, around this program. You know, my defense coordinator, Taylor Harvey, uh, Came from Sequatchie. I competed against him while I was at Red Bank. He was at Sequatchie, and we we had some battles, man, in the, in the playoffs. And I knew if I could get him, man, at least we would bring a toughness and a an edge to our defense. I had no idea like, the level uh, that he would bring. You know, he's really built. We, we kind of preach a, a dog mentality. So, you know, we give guys dog tags. Uh, that kind of represent that they're willing to do whatever it takes to fly around to the football and make plays, you know, and just because you're a starter on defense doesn't mean you get a dog tag. You got to earn that dog tag. Um, you know, we have two guys on defense right now that have it. Uh, so it's not something you're just given. You got to go earn it. So uh, another one, I think last year, you know, the first year Taylor was here, um, he, he did a lot of things just on his own and, and just kind of gave the game plan away. Last year, we brought in uh, his cousin, Brandon Ashby, who was the defense coordinator 
at Sequatchie. Uh, and, and the Valley, dude, Valley football is just different, man. You got to be hard. Up. You got to be, you got to be, uh, on, you know, on edge. And those two guys, man, they play. I'll flip over to the defensive headset during games, and they just play so well off each other. And I owe a lot of what we do to those guys. <clears throat> But also, man, we got some good players on defense. Uh, Eli Denton, as a sophomore, was all state uh, at linebacker, and he's been obviously uh, as a sophomore. If you're making all state, you're a really good football player. He's probably uh, per per Taylor and Brandon, probably the best defensive player they've ever been able to coach. And he's just a junior. Uh, he kind of anchors our defense. I really like our linebackers. Uh, they fly to the football. They're violent. Kyler Paris had a fumble recovery last last week. Uh, Judah is all over the field. And then our D-line has just been very solid. Uh, we got Jackson Gibson, who uh, his brother is the tight end at UTC, Jay Gibson. Uh, same body type, just big kids. Uh, he's learning still how to play low pad level and all those things. Uh, Josh Van Wicket knows who, who's the wrestler. He's that 180-pound nose guard that will just fight you all night long. And we've already talked about, uh, obviously, Miles Mann and the great week he had last week. Uh, he was all over the field, just absolutely unblockable. So love our front seven, man. And and so much of tonight is going to hinge off – or Friday night is going to hinge off stopping the run. Uh, if, if we can run the ball and we can stop the run, uh, I really like our chances. If we can't do those two things, uh, it's going to be a long night for us. So we're preaching, you know, stopping the run. Uh, at all costs, and I think our front seven is able. Uh, they've got to execute the game plan. Jeff K. Or, or Coach Stone, whoever whoever you want. You know, I think this real quick. I, I, I said this a couple of weeks ago. Football has changed so much now. You know, uh, we, we're now, you know, we're spread offense, and so many times I think getting in, and, and I got into this. I was an offensive coordinator for eight years in the spread offense. We get into this thing, we're going to score, 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 score. I said a couple of weeks ago, you know, if I ever, which I'm not, if I ever went back into coaching, you know, spread offense would be one, but we're going to have a good defense. You know, I, we're, we're, we're going to work to that because, you know, some nights that thing doesn't, you know, it doesn't work like exactly like you want to. But, uh, and I, I think I turned a lot of people off, but, uh, you know, I, I think when you got a great defense and, and and you get out of that mentality that we're going to score every time we get the ball and we're going to, we're going to win the ball game 56 to 53. Um, and, and that, that sounds like what you've done. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, I love offense. Don't get me wrong, but you know, if you look at my history uh, as a coordinator, uh, I've always had a great defense. At Udawa, man, we had some lights out defenses. At Red Bank, when we went on our semifinal run, we had some lights out dudes on defense. So I've learned over the years, you know, as an offensive coordinator, I didn't have to care about it. I could just, hey, you give me the ball, I'm going to score. I'm going to score. Exactly. Uh, you know, Charles Weems is one of my great friends. He's He's been a defense coordinator at Red Bank for the last – uh, you know, five years ago, and then he's kind of taken a step back, but he still coaches over there. He was at Hickson. He's been around, uh, and he's every time I got the ball with a minute and a half left in the half, he was like, Drew, if you give it back to him, I promise I'm going to kill you. But, man, I'm always trying to go score as a coordinator. But when you're a head coach and you got to look at the entire program, uh, that's something that I've learned, you know, over, over the last two or three years that, man, you got to protect those guys too. And just because you're scoring a bunch of plays, if you're throwing them right back on the field without rest, without adjustments, uh, then then you're going to gas that defense out. So being being smart about when you tempo, uh, being smart about you know when you're throwing the football, how much time's left, all those things are stuff that I've learned over the past two years as a head coach. That as a coordinator, I just didn't care about. Man, I'm just trying to score points. So. Well, see, the case in point, you know, when you were talking, uh, Coach, I was thinking about that game. Last time I saw you guys was in that postseason game against Powell, you know. Yeah. And, and the quarterback they had last year, you know, Potts, you know, great quarterback. And yeah. you held those guys under 20 points, and you made just enough plays to uh, to get the win. So, like you said, I think you definitely get, have done a great job of, you know, obviously, you know, geared toward offense and being able to uh, have plenty of weapons and speed on that side, but just having a lockdown defense and, 
you, you may bend a little bit, but you don't break and let them in the end zone. So that's definitely a good thing for sure. Yeah, yeah. our defense has been so good. I'll tell you where they've been so impressive the last, uh, you know, 12 games. If you look at last year and then last Friday, uh, just the turnover margin, what they're able to do of getting the ball uh, into our hands. Last year we set a school record for most – the largest turnover margin for a year at plus 11. This year we're plus five. Um, so, you know, just being able to to get the ball out of their hands. Uh, we have some ball hawks on defense and that turnover chain, you know, our turnover chain is a big dog tag. I mean, like covers their whole chest and uh, it means something to our guys and, and getting that chain and making, you know, a pitcher in that chain means, means you did something to help us win the ball game. So, the Powell game was cool just because, you know, we did we did what we had to do to win. Uh, I think they got into a little, we want to win pretty. And I've been there where I want to win pretty. I want to win throwing the ball and doing all this. Man, We all we cared about that night was winning. Uh, so we lined up. Yeah, we lined up in, in our load set last year. And <coughs> the last eight minutes of the game, we said, hey, we're going to run power right here. Uh, and if you stop it, you'll get the ball back. And, and they weren't able to. So we held on to it for eight minutes to end the game. And it wasn't pretty. Uh, but but a win is always pretty. So uh, that's something, you know, like you said, I've just kind of learned that uh, a win's a win, whether it's pretty or not. Yeah, but looking at this game Friday, too, as well, I mean, you know, the, obviously, you know, county pride and, you know, that is at stake for sure. But you know, first time in school history that both of these teams have been ranked in their, you know, in their matchup. You know, you guys are ranked number six in 5A and and Bradley Central's in the top 10 in 6A too. And obviously, you know, the community is going to come out and support this game. It's at, you know, Walker Valley, the new turf field, like you said, a lot of positive energy going on, you know, in this game and in this program. I heard you mention, you know, preseason coach about, you know, the game last year, even though it was a loss, taught you guys some things going into that, you know, push like into the end of the year. Do you see this game kind of kind of being the same thing or what, what do you think about that? Yeah, you know, I, I owe a lot of credit to that game last year of teaching us how to win ball games. You know, when we were up 21 to nothing, um, we were surprised. And, and I don't know any other way to say that. You know, I, I told our guys all week, hey, you're going to be up. You're going to be up, and you're going to be up big, man, and you're going to you're going to be dominant, and, and we were, but we were shocked by it. I mean, our kids were celebrating. We were emotional. Uh, the crowd was emotional. It was an it was an unbelievable half, <laughs> but but you're not allowed to play just a half. Uh, you got to come back. You got to play the second quarter, and a lot of those emotions that we spent in the first quarter in the second quarter. We weren't able to, to recover from it in the second half. Uh, so we cramped really bad in the second half. We uh, Every play it felt like somebody else was cramping uh, because we expended so much energy because we were surprised. And what we kind of talked about this week and, you know, what we learned last year is, is don't be surprised, man. Expect it. It's become the expectation that you get in ball games like this. So when you do, act like you've been there. Uh, and we've preached that to our guys. We've preached hydration. We've pre preached nutrition. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're protecting, you know, our, our players throughout this week. So when we get to Friday, we're healthy uh, and that we're ready to go and ready to go four quarters because it's going to be a four-quarter battle. There's zero doubt about that. Uh, but, yeah, I think, you know, learning, you know, being up 21 nothing and still coming back and losing – you learn a lot about yourself, and we've talked about adversity. We talk about adversity all the time in our, our program because uh, if football is anything, it's a great teacher of life, and you're going to face adversity. Whether you invite that adversity by making bad decisions or you just fall into adversity because of bad luck or just because life is going to throw you adversity, like those things are going to happen. So let's learn on the football field how to handle adversity. You either quit or you keep pressing forward. And I think that game kind of taught us how to continue to press forward and continue to fight. And I owe a lot to the Pal win because of that loss uh, against Bradley Central. So, you know, uh, and I think we've kind of carried that over to this year where, you know, we're more mentally ready to win that ball game because we've experienced those things. Uh, at that point last year, we hadn't experienced anything. 
Uh, you know, we hadn't had a single big win uh, to our resume. So being in that game was new to us. So we hadn't been there. So we acted like we hadn't been there. Well, now we have. Uh, so we're preaching to our guys to, to act like you've been there and expect it. Uh, that way you don't get emotional when it happens. Coach, uh, Coach Akins, we, uh, we want to wish you the best of luck this Friday night. Um, we appreciate you coming on and, uh, and highlighting your program. It's our first week. We were shocked. Um, our first week we had over 1,300 listeners. And um, uh, for a small southeastern Tennessee podcast, that is, you know, it, it blew our minds. And and uh, we, we want to give coaches the opportunity to, to highlight their programs. And you definitely did a great job of that. And we want to wish you the best of luck on Friday night. Man, I got it, guys. I appreciate it. And I'll tell you this. The reason you get that much, the reason that because people love high school football. Yeah. Right? Period. End of discussion, man. And when you start supporting kids – you start supporting programs, uh, people are going to buy into that. So, man, I can't tell you how thankful I am for y'all having me. Uh, and let me tell you about some of the stuff we got going on here because I think we got some great momentum. So I appreciate you guys. Absolutely. Walker Valley, Walker Valley football is going to be uh, something special to watch rest of this year. I sure hope so. Tell hey, your dad right. I said hello. I will, Coach. Thank you. See you All Friday right. night, Coach. Thank you. All right. See Thanks, you Coach. That was Coach Drew Akins, and we, uh, we, we, like we said, we appreciate him coming on. Just to let me tell you, that was probably one of the best interviews I've ever, I've ever heard. That Coach Akins is uh, phenomenal. I mean, he is, he is just lights out whenever it comes to, to interviews. And he was that was, that was fantastic. And just you know, if you, if you seen like you know him. Uh, you know, his preseason stuff and being around him last year when he got this opportunity as well, you know, it's, that's just, you know, the, the, the textbook example of Drew Akins is that right there. And, you know, he's definitely excited about his program, willing to talk about them. And, you know, like you said, I mean, you know, that, that's what high school football is about is highlighting these student athletes and these coaches in these communities. And, you know, definitely appreciate coach Akins uh, coming on and, uh, you know, it is going to be a big Friday night there in, in that County. And, you know, those, you know, there's three schools in that county, obviously Cleveland, Bradley Central, and Walker Valley. Well, uh, Cleveland's Cleveland's part of the Cleveland City School System, so they're in a whole other school system. These are the two high schools in the Bradley County School System. So definitely it's going to be a big, big night for, for Bradley County Schools and for just that, you know, for Bradley County period. So it's, it's going to be a great atmosphere. I'm looking forward to it. That's, 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 yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. And i tell you what, if I could have Drew Aikens on every week, I would have Drew Aikens on every Saturday. That was just fantastic. Um, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to be back with a recap of week one, um, some some other news with COVID cancellations. We want to make sure you, uh, you get all of those COVID cancellations. So we'll be right back after this quick commercial break on the Friday Night Press Box Southeast Tennessee podcast presented by Team FYN Sports. All right, we're back on the Southeast Tennessee Friday Night Press Box podcast presented by Team FYN Sports. Guys, a good week one. Um, yeah, I thought there was a good slew of games, and um, we'll run over a few here. Bradley Central, 33-6 win over Brainerd last week. Polk County, a big win on the hill, 42-19 over Copper Basin. Uh, McMinn County, a 27-0 winner over McMinn Central. Cleveland, a big win on the road, 17-10 at Red Bank. That was just that's big for that Cleveland program, like we mentioned earlier. Loudon, a 31-6 to winner over Saudi Daisy. Again, Walker Valley, 37 nothing over Notre Dame. And then, Jeff, the uh, Coca-Cola Red Zone game of the week. East Hamilton wins over Udwa, 33-13. And correct me if I'm wrong, that is East Hamilton's first win at home against Udwa, correct? It is. It, is. it was the first win that uh, East Hamilton had over their rival, their uh, – you know, they're rivaling Udawa at home and also during the regular season. So they, they got a, they got a twofer there at Hurricane Hill on Friday night. And, uh, you know, that 
that game was it was it was a twenty to thirteen East Hamilton lead at halftime. You know, Udawa came out and was trading blows with East Hamilton, and uh, you know the the thing that came out late, you know, around Friday afternoon was East Ham or uh, Udawa was was down eighteen, almost twenty players due to contact tracing with COVID. So obviously they were down numbers wise, and you could definitely tell in the second half it definitely caught up with them, but. You know, let's not, you know, discount what uh, Coach Reynolds' team at East Hamilton did, you know, to, to make that, you know, as well happen. Uh, you know, that it was the debut of quarterback Lake Clark, uh, you know, coming in his first game, 192 yards and three touchdowns through the air. And, you know, the thing that I, I think we mentioned last week was just the big play capability, guys, that East Hamilton had. Well, if you look at their five touchdowns, all but one of those was over 25 yards. They had a 65-yard run and a 60-yard catch from uh, Juan Bullard. And then we talked about Jeremiah Flemings, the uh, you know the the very explosive athlete from uh, East Hamilton. He had a 27-yard touchdown catch just before the half. And then in the third quarter, Kanye Bergen's thir- uh, 34-yard touchdown catch. <laughs> Jeremiah Flemings had the short five-yard touchdown run uh, to to put the game away to make it that 20-point uh, margin of victory. So. Uh, you know, just uh, definitely a, a big win for East Hamilton and Coach Reynolds' team. And, you know, couple that with uh, the Red Bank uh, loss to Cleveland, that that region, you know, those, those two teams are in the same region. So they had some some very big uh, uh, first week games there between, you know, between Ottawa and, Cle- uh, and Cleveland for sure. But, you know, with Red Bank and Cleveland real quick, you know, Cleveland was up big and then Red Bank was able to cut it to seven late in the game to – to make it close, and I know that Coach Brown's going to preach uh, overcoming that adversity and learning something from that. But yeah, that East Hamilton Udawa game, you know, we were excited about that. It was the first time they had played in three years, and you know, they they share a zip code, and they did something really cool at halftime too. If I can share that, there was a uh, there's a young man who on East Hamilton, his name is Judson Kilpatrick, and uh, he overcame a bout with leukemia. And Coach Reynolds was telling me about that after the game, and you know, at halftime. Udawa presented him with a helmet, almost like, you know, the one behind me here, signed by the entire team. So definitely props to Coach Manning for getting that organized. And they're also, they also have little round circles on their helmets this year that say Judson Strong. So, I mean, you know, the, the way I put it on the red zone Friday night, it's definitely community before rivalry. That was something that was definitely cool to see. And st- something you, you really don't see that often, you know, in a rivalry game in high school football much. So, uh, that was definitely a bright spot there to kind of sandwich the two halves of football there for sure. I'm glad you brought that up because one thing I was going to mention, <clears throat> McMinn County went on the road to play McMinn Central last week. They were a 27-0 winner. But on the first play of the game, um, Coach Stone was in the stands to uh, to see this, and it was, man, I, I was on the sideline. It was it was special. McMinn County went into a, a sort of wing T type thing. They ran the, They ran the ball for nine yards on first down. McMinn County gave the ball to uh, to Coach Molinax's son for the game ball, and um, I try not to get emotional about it now. It's just that moving. It was um, it was special to watch, and seeing seeing Coach Molinax's son uh, hold the ball up, it was just it was something you had to be a part of. And, and Coach Stone, I, I looked up to make sure that you caught a glimpse of what they were doing, and and it was special, wasn't it? I was, I, I was sitting there watching, you know, and, and Coach Cagle had said something about, yeah, we, we're we're going to be running the wing T, you know, something like that. I, I don't know what he said on, on our show, but, uh, you know, in, in the pregame, there wasn't nothing that looked like they were they were a wing T. And, and when they came out of the huddle, uh, the first thing that went through my mind and I know Ch- Coach Mullinax has changed this. He, he had changed this play call, you know, a hundred times since he and I ran it in 1983. But uh, we we called that play uh, RT28. And, uh, you know, I somebody sitting there next to me, and I, I'm going, they just ran RT28, which was a buck sweep to the right, got nine yards. And I thought, you know, maybe they're going to do this. But I thought it was I, I I appreciate McMinn County certainly McMinn Central that was that was a that was a super gesture and to see Josh step out there on the field and get that game ball um, tears went back in my eyes because of uh, 
so many ball games. We started uh, we started the ball game with RT twenty eight, and uh, you know I think he eventually called it uh, uh, two twenty eight, and you know, and and this lady sitting next to me, she said, "What do you mean?" I said, I said "Well, they just ran, they just ran a play that." When I coached with Coach Mullinax, that that was our favorite, you know, our favorite play, and certainly his. And but I appreciate McMinn Central, uh, McMinn County, for that gesture. It was, I'm telling you, it was it was special to be a part of. And just another example, guys, community before rivalry. You know, I mean, you know, you, you can hate each other for forty <clears throat> for forty eight minutes, you know, and uh, you know the rest of the time, you know, the, it's just like you know, Udawais Hamilton, you know, Central and and County there. You know that they're they're citizens. They go to the same places. I'm sure. You know, whenever they're around each other. So, uh, yeah, and that's that. That's just as good of a story to me as just what what I'm seeing in front of me. You know, first and ten, whatever it is. So that's that's an awesome thing. I'm glad you guys have got to share that with me. That's a great story. You know, you know, Wes. I bet there wasn't 75 people in the stands that that understood that. No, and and there probably wasn't. And <clears throat> I'll tell you a, a funny part to that. Um, I don't know if you if you noticed this, Coach Stone, uh, the DPA reporter. Nobody had given word to the DPA reporter, and so the, the officials just let him across the field. <laughs> you, you can see the DPA reporter just sprinting across the field, man. And I, and I was I was laughing, I was clapping, I was trying not to cry, and it was. Well, it <laughs> it, it, it was it was a special moment to me uh, to be there. And to honor a guy, you know, that that's done so much for high school football. Correct. And um, and like we've mentioned, gosh, a hundred times, Coach Mullinax was that guy, and it was man, he was that was that was great. Um, Jeff Kate, want to ask you about go just a little bit more into touch about that Cleveland win over Red Bank. Not many people would have picked Cleveland over Red Bank in this matchup. Yeah, I think well, me included. I'm in the uh, the Chattanooga.com, you know, pick and poll as a quote expert. Well, they definitely proved everybody on that poll and then some wrong for sure. And you know, if you look at the history of that of that matchup in that series, you know, Cleveland has a, a a sizable lead in in the overall series. And you know, I guess we expect we I guess the unknown of Cleveland, you know, because that you know they they had to win the last regular season game just to get in the playoffs last year. And, you know, like we mentioned before, how we know what Red Bank was able to do in 3A until they got to Alcoa. Well, you know, I think Cleveland definitely used that as motivation. Coach Wheeler, I'm sure he was hammering that all week, especially on Friday, probably on the bus heading over to Red Bank saying, hey, nobody in, in this coverage area thinks you guys can uh, can go to Red Bank and get a victory. Well, they definitely proved that wrong. And, you know, they, they, they came out and hit Red Bank, you know, in the mouth early on and, you know, like I mentioned, Red Bank made a rally to make it, you know, make it close. But, uh, you know, in the end, Cleveland got a big, big win on the road. And, uh, you know, they weren't looking, you know, they, they know what's next week. They, they play Bradley Central next week, I believe, look at the schedule. So uh, they wanted to come out and set the tone first week, especially against a good opponent like Red Bank. And they definitely did that for sure uh, last week at Red Bank Community Stadium. All right, guys, before we leave. I want to start doing this, and so this is what we're going to start doing. We're going to do our own little pickle. Oh gosh, our own little pickle. And I want to make this part of the, the uh, part of the podcast. So, a game that Jeff Kate's familiar with this weekend. Macaulay goes on the road to Calhoun. Macaulay is on the road at Calhoun. Jeff Kate, who you got? Well, you know, looking at this game from last year, this was a a not a. What's the how, how I'm trying to think how you can put this a gift because of the COVID cancellation? Don't you know, don't take anything you know wrong with what I said there, but you know, due to some of the COVID cancellations, these two teams wound up meeting last year at Finley Stadium. Macaulay won by double digits, and uh, this should this is shaping up to be another great matchup between one of the better uh, powers in North Georgia and Calhoun. We know what they can do, and in, in a in a division two triple A back to back state champion in Macaulay, and uh, you know, until Really, Macaulay shows otherwise. I'm going to have to go with Coach Potter and, and the Blue Tornado. They, they've proven time and time again, the last few years especially, doesn't matter where it's at or the atmosphere, they find a way to get it done. I think they get it done. It's going to be close. I think they get it done at Calhoun on Friday night. Coach Stone, Macaulay, Macaulay. or Calhoun, Georgia? Macaulay. Oh. 
I will also go with Macaulay. I think the the uh, Blue Tornadoes are just too much, uh, too much. They're, they're very good. Another game we highlighted tonight, Lenore City is at Loudon. Um, I'll go ahead and start. I've got Loud. I've got Loud big. We picked this one earlier. All of us took Loud. Teleco is at McMahon Central. Coach Stone, McMahon Central on offense didn't look too great. Now, granted, we were the only county in all of all of Tennessee last week that got rain, and it rained from eight minutes left in the first quarter to the third quarter. I mean, it, and let me tell you, it rained cats and dogs. It did. And, uh, Goes on the road at McMinn Central. We'll start with Coach Stone. Who you got? I'm going to go with McMinn Central. Is this not two years in a row Teleco's played at Central? No. Okay. No, we we went to Teleco last year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Cake, Teleco or Central? Uh, I'm going to assume, Wes, you're going with the uh, McMinn Central pick, aren't you? Other way. All right there it is. McMinn Central. I've got the blue. You know what? Let's just – I don't know much about both teams. Let's just – I'll be the black sheep here. Let's go with Teleco Plains. The black sheep. Come on now. <laughs> Man. I was looking for a McMahon Central blue sweep is what I was looking for. Um, Cleveland coming off the big wing win at Red Bank. is on the road at McMahon County who beat McMahon Central 27-0. Um, Jeff Cape, Cleveland at McMahon. Oh man, it's like you know. I, I want to pick. This is going to uh, be a good football game. It is going to be a great football game, and I think if you know, depending on how things go, it could wind up being a game of the. You know, everybody should be looking at that game. That's not. That's not looking at you know, Macaulay Calhoun or Walker Valley Bradley Central. But uh, you know, it's just you know, two great teams like like you mentioned, Coach Kegel and Coach Wheeler. That's going to be another great football game between two hard hitting football teams, and um, I think we'll have to go with McMinn County on this one, guys. Coach Stone. Um, I was, I, I was impressed with, with McMinn County last year, uh, last week, replacing <clears throat> nine starters on offense. Um, the running back 17 was, was, was a heck of a runner. Dave Evans, he was good. And, uh, and then, uh, the quarterback from McMinn County. Jaden Miller. I think he's, I think he's a, He's, he's an excellent quarterback. I'm going to go with McMinn County. Uh, Jaden Miller and, uh, and Davion Evans, a good good one-two combo. Davion Evans is no Jalen Hunt, but he's going to he's gonna get the ball a lot this year, and he's going to do a good job with it running the rock. Um, and Jaden Miller, he can spin it. I mean, he he throws a good ball. He, he puts some balls in some windows. I didn't think he could get some in. And, um, Did a great and, job. Uh, yeah, and that being the reason I'm going to take McMinn County, it hurts my heart to say that, but I'm going to take McMinn County. Um, now, if we had a Lee Corso on this podcast, we would get out the headgear. Um, Jeff, Kate, you could be our Lee Corso, but uh, Bradley Central goes on the road to Walker Valley. I don't know if you have Bradley Central Walker Valley helmets, but that would be something. I was going to say, you know, of course you're going to make me pick, you know, a game that I'm covering on Friday night, of course. And, uh, yeah, you know, all the Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I pitched in the Chattanooga pick and poll. I might as well do it here too, right? So, uh, you know, just looking at both of these teams, like we said, you know, heard, you heard what Coach Aikens said, you know, not making history, but setting new expectations, I think, is is the way that he's going to put it. And uh, I think he did. I mean, it's going to be another great game between these two teams. I think it's going to come down probably to the final possession. And I, I think uh, Walker Valley finds a way to get a, get a win, get their second win in history over Bradley Central Friday night. Coach Stone. Bradley Central. I was going to pick Bradley Central, but that Coach Aiken segment got me fired up. And uh, I'm going to take Walker Valley. And it's simply because that Drew Aiken segment, man, it fired me up. He's got that team rolling. And, um, man, I, I cannot wait to uh, – I, I hate that I cannot go to this game uh, with my with my responsibilities at 99.5. But, man, that's going to be – that's going to be an awesome football game there at Walker Valley. There you go. And, um, man, it's just – wait, Jeff, real quick, do you have those um, COVID cancellations? Yeah, dude, we'll just do this real quick. I know we're running low on, yeah. we're, we're low on time. Just This is as of the recording of this podcast, but the games we have as far as our local teams in our southeast Tennessee area that have been postponed or canceled due to COVID, we had Red Bank, Ottawa, Bledsoe County, Moore County, Hickson, Notre Dame, uh, Chattanooga Central, Franklin County, 
Meigs County and Keegs Academy, Whitwell and Huntland, Ray County and Elizabethan, and Copper Basin Fanning County are the only ones we know of so far. And uh, kind of waiting until to see if uh, if Friday if, if any more shoes drop in because we've had some of those issues last year. So uh, let's just keep our fingers crossed that that, that that's all we have uh, for for this week for sure. Correct, and and uh, we do record on Wednesday night, so there could be cancellations um with with covid but you know before friday um so what what i would suggest you do is follow at t press box on twitter that's the friday night press box podcast twitter um and that we'll we'll give you all of the the updates there um you can follow at these the jeff kate as well he'll he'll put covid up updates out there as well um you can follow me on twitter as well and uh we'll, we'll keep you all updated so um Guys, a very good show with Coach Herrig. I know there was technical difficulties, but he he had texted me and said he would he would love to come back on anytime. He um, he'll bring his computer back home and uh, see if that'll work. But so so we'll have Coach Herrig on sometime in the future. Um, and I'd have like I said, I'd have Coach Akins on any any week. So that was great. Uh, yeah, I mean, amazing. <laughs> but um, guys, we uh. Like we said, we want to appreciate our listeners listening to us. Like, share, subscribe on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, any podcast platform, Apple Podcast, and Spotify as well. Um, guys, we're ready for week two, aren't we? Always. Always. I'm, ready, I'm ready to go. I, just, I hate this. I, I hate this cancellation stuff, but it's what it is. It is what it is. We just got to be thankful that some teams are playing and, and uh, we have some football. So, um, guys, it's been a good show, and we uh, we appreciate you listening to us on the, on Friday Night Press Box, Southeast Tennessee Podcast, presented by Team FYN Sports. We'll talk to you next week.